Hello and welcome to episode 67 of the Ortho Eval Pal podcast. I am your host, Paul Markey, and um, just want to start off by saying thank you for all those of you who have been watching and listening uh, to the uh, podcast, either on YouTube or uh, through our website or on iTunes. I really appreciate that. Now, I'm doing this series on uh, nerve root compression issues of the cervical spine. And, and why is that? You know, we, it's called ortho eval pal. Um, but one of the things that I find very, very important, no matter what level of uh, the medical profession you're in, it's super important to understand that there are little lookalikes out there that may look like something, but they're really actually something else. And so understanding the, uh, the nerve roots of the cervical spine can really help tease out upper extremity dysfunction. And so uh, we're going to get into that today with episode uh, 67 on C7 nerve root compression. We're going to just focus on that today. But um, before we do that, I'd like to just take a moment to hear a word from our sponsors. Hello and welcome back. So we're going to be talking about C7 nerve root compression today. Now that doesn't mean just a herniated disc or a disc that is pushing on the nerve root. You could have uh, foraminal stenosis because of some arthritis. You could have instability of the cervical spine, but all of these things can give you nerve root irritation. So it's important that you kind of identify where that is and um, not only how to evaluate it, but how to manage it when you see it. So what is the most common pain pattern for C7? Um, usually you'll get some lower cervical spine discomfort. Usually with this, you get some scapular border pain and on occasion, some chest discomfort. Now, you know, make sure that you don't just think that this is a heart attack or something like that, but don't discount that either. There are many people who have anterior chest pain due to cervical herniated discs. Um, and it is a very easy way to identify if it's coming from the neck or if it's coming from the heart. Just mobilize the neck try to impinge that side a little bit and that'll increase that chest pain. And if that happens when they move their neck, you can pretty, pretty be well assured that, you know, it's more of a cervical spine issue and not really a cardiac issue. Um, that pain can also go down the lateral brachium. Okay. So the lateral side of the arm all the way down to the dorsal or, or posterior aspect of the um, forearm into the dorsum of the middle finger. Okay. Now, sometimes you'll get a little bit of uh, paresthesias into the index finger and the ring, ring finger, but this is most significant in the middle finger. Okay. For C7, whereas a sensation loss, mostly it's usually the dorsal forearm and tricep region and the dorsum of that middle finger. So when you're doing your sensory testing, remember to identify where your dermatomes are know where that is in your head, always go through the same pattern. And that will really help with identifying what level this problem is at. Okay. And at the end, we'll talk about how to even get a little bit deeper in identifying which level um, the nerve root compression is at. Where's the most common strength loss? It's at the triceps. And this is a very easy one to identify. I always love, uh, it's not good for patients, but I always love identifying a C7 because it's pretty straightforward. Pain down the arm, loss of sensation over the uh, dorsum of the uh, middle finger. And uh, that tricep weakness is pretty significant. If you lay them on their back flat, um, they will start to have some increased pain down the arm, maybe even into the chest and scapula. You test their triceps and it'll be really, really weak. Give them a little traction to their neck and retest their triceps while you're in, while they're in traction. Call the marquee maneuver, which the video will be in the link of the, this show today. Um, and it's pretty significantly weak. So, and patients will also complain of, you know, the difficulty of getting up out of a chair, pushing up out of a chair or getting up off the floor and pushing off that tricep becomes really, really, really weak. Some people will say, I can't even do a push up anymore. And I used to do 20 last week. Um, so remember the triceps are involved with the C7 nerve root compression. And then when it comes to deep tendon reflexes, um, the uh, triceps reflex is the uh, C7 reflex. So make sure you test that, make sure you do it with good quality. The patient needs to be relaxed. You're using a good reflex hammer. I have done a couple of videos on that too. So um, make sure you go to that. I'll link that in the show notes today. Um, so pretty easy to identify. You know, it's pretty distinct uh, as far as nerve roots go in the cervical spine. Make sure that you uh, check out the show notes for the marquee maneuver. I have a video of a patient who has a C6 and C7 nerve root compression and an isolated C7 nerve root compression also. Um, I'll also uh, throw in the uh, videos into the links on the deep tendon reflexes. I'm sure you'll enjoy that. So again, folks, thank you for listening. Make sure you stay tuned for C8. Um, that will be uh, coming up next week. Take care.